work on earthquakes. State is on red alert as swarm of over 50 earthquakes strike off the west coast in the Cascadia area of the Juan de Fuca plate. We know that we had a 9.2 magnitude earthquake in the year 1700 and we're going to see a simulation by USGS of the tsunami that took place at that time. It hit the whole of the Pacific uh, plate, the Pacific Ocean, with uh, most of the areas with over 10 feet of uh, wave. And you can see this is the simulation coming in. You'll see it at um, stopping at 20 hours or so. But uh, this was the 9.2 earthquake of the year 1700. We have a tremendous amount of earthquakes ongoing the past three days. And uh, as we know, this is a very dangerous area, the Cascadia subduction zone, the convergent plate boundary stretching from North Vancouver Island in Canada to Northern California in the United States. It's a sloping subduction zone where explorer Juan de Fuca and Gorda plates move to the east and slide below the much larger, mostly continental North American plate. The uh, zone varies in widths and lies offshore beginning near Cape Mendocino, Northern California, passing through Oregon and Washington, and terminating about Vancouver Island, British Columbia. The tectonic processes in the uh, active Cascadia subduction zone include accretion, subduction, deep earthquakes, and active volcanism in the Cascades. Now, these earthquakes here are not deep. They're about uh, 10 kilometer, ten, uh, six miles down. All of them are about six miles depth. And um, I don't think this is, a, this is a default. Of course, it may be because of the fact that they're in the ocean, they're underwater, but still they're not listed as being deep. And we're going to take a look at the maps there as well. The uh, tectonic plates, processes giving volcanoes, in the area and also very uh, strong earthquakes. The volcanism includes such notable eruptions as Mount Mazama, Crater Lake that is, about the year 7,500 years ago, Mount Meager, massive bridge river vent about 2,350 years ago, Mount St. Helens which last erupted in 1980. Major cities affected by the disturbance of the subduction zone include Vancouver, and Victoria and British Columbia, Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. Now, because of these quakes, the state is on red alert. Over 50 quakes. I would say more than like 100, I would, do, I would say. Tremors began on Tuesday local time. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And they're still ongoing today. And the last biggest one we had was, let me see, within the hour, 5.4 magnitude. And before that, 5.2. So they're not small. Um, and uh, we did have uh, smaller earthquakes about uh, 500 years ago. These are not small, though. They're big. They're in the range of anywhere between 4.5 to 5.8 magnitude. So uh, this is why the state is on red alert. The tremors began Tuesday and uh, were detected some 200 miles from Newport, Oregon's central coast. Experts in the USGS said they ranged in intensity between 3.5 magnitude and 5.8 magnitude. Earthquakes erupting along one of the U.S. busiest fault lines. Fractures in the Earth's crust where rocks are either uh, on either side have slid past each other, of course. According to Harold Tobin, director of Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at the University of Washington, this Pacific area is known for its frequent seismicity. He said, if you have asked me yesterday where on Earth would be most likely to produce a bunch of magnitude 5 plus earthquakes in a single day, this would have been high on my list. The earthquakes were too far off the coast to be felt. In the U.S., National Tsunami Warning Center has not issued any tsunami warnings. But the swarm 
was impressive nonetheless. It contained at least nine tremors above five magnitude. So this is not good when Cascadia wakes up like this with so many earthquakes. The event has also sparked fears of possible major quake brewing along the Cascadia subduction zone or a mega thrust that stretches from northern Vancouver Island in Canada to northern California, United States. These may be, for what they're saying or thinking or fearing, these may be uh, foreshocks. Now, one of the biggest earthquakes in U.S. history, believed to have struck along the Cascadia zone in the year 1700, although there are no contemporary records, the USGS asked by one Twitter user, Rogue Melanidis, whether the swarm was linked to the mega thrust because that would be all kinds of not good. And luckily, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, Network at PNSN, we're going to see the maps there, said not Cascadia. These earthquakes are happening along the Blanco Transform Fault, which is about 200 miles further offshore from Cascadia. They are not likely to have an impact on the subduction zone fault. Dr. Eric Fielding, geophysicist at Pasadena, California, also said that although impressive, the earthquakes did not pose any danger. The swarm struck along Blanco Fracture Zone, which the expert said is not connected to the Cascadia Megathrust. Now, he said he tweeted quite an active swarm of earthquakes on the Blanco Fracture Zone about 250 miles west of Oregon. Not a concern at this, as this, at, at this is far from uh, Cascadia Subduction Zone. Five magnitude of uh, five quakes in an hour is impressive, though, he said. And Dr. Lucy Jones of Caltech, seismologist and author based in Southern California, also assured magnitude five quakes in the region are common and have never been followed by something on land, she said. Earthquakes on the scale of 5 to 5.9 on the Richter scale are considered to be moderate and can cause damage to a building. USGS explained magnitude is expressed in whole numbers and decimal fractions. For example, a magnitude 5.3 is a moderate earthquake and 6.3 is a strong earthquake. And because of the logarithmic basis of the scale, each whole number increases magnitude representation, a tenfold increase in measured amplitude as measured on the seismogram. And this is um, by Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. Let's take a look at the maps now. Okay, here we are at Seismo Berkeley, and uh, this is the last one, 5.4. As you can see, they're not, they have not plotted all the, um, they're all at 10, mi uh, 6 miles depth. Um, they don't have all the uh, earthquakes plotted here, but this is the area. It's right on the fracture zone, Blanco fracture zone, right there, Cascadia, right there. Okay, Seattle, Washington. Portland, Oregon, and Northern California. And uh, going back to the area PNSN, these are the quakes, the last, the last one 5.4, 5.2 before that, and these, are, these here are actually hundreds of earthquakes, total 190, uh, 198, not 50, but 198, okay, in uh, three days. Three days. Okay, this is the last hour, and this is the last two days, and before that. So you can see the tremendous amount of activity there. Okay. And uh, on this range here is where we have our um, high threat volcanoes. Okay, even here, four magnitude, and that was. Uh, a deeper depth, about uh, 17 miles. But these here are about uh, 10 miles depth. Okay. This is the area of, of about 200 earthquakes up to now. And that's an old one, sorry. Let's go to this one, 5.4. Nobody reported that, feeling that, but... Um, we have, we have the quake maps here, the shake maps, the contours. Okay, the aerial, 
and let's get some tectonics here okay it's right on the black hole fracture zone as we can see here there we are now they're big enough that they can you know when you have a pieces of a puzzle jostling uh, the fault lines uh, jostle one next to the other as well i mean that that causes other earthquakes around the area because of the movement and Cascadia, as we can see here, right there, the subduction, the Pacific plate underneath the North American plate. Recent seismicity, subduction zones experience various types of earthquakes, including slow earthquakes, mega thrust earthquakes, okay, the big ones, interplate earthquakes, intraplate earthquakes. A tremor type of slow fault slip occurs along most of the entire length of Cascadia, regular intervals 13 to 16 months. Tremors occurs deeper in the subduction interface at the locked area where the megathrust earthquake occurs. The majority of interplate, interplate earthquakes or quakes that occur near the boundaries of the tectonic plates near the Cascadia subduction zone occur in the fore arc of the, here we are, volcanic fronts. Four arc is the region between the ocean trench and the associated volcanic arc and uh, overriding North American plate west of Cascadia volcanic arc and east of where tremors occur. The uh, megathrust earthquakes. Megathrust earthquakes, most powerful earthquakes known to occur, can exceed magnitude 9 which is a thousand times stronger than magnitude 7 a million times stronger than magnitude 5. They occur when enough energy has accumulated in the locked zone of the fault to cause a rupture, and the magnitude of the megathrust earthquake is proportional to the length of the rupture, of course, along the fault. Cascadia subduction zone, which forms the boundary between Juan de Fuca and North American plates, is a very long sloping fault stretching from mid-Vancouver Island to Northern California. Now, the San Andreas Fault Connection. Studies of past earthquakes trace on both the North San Andreas Fault and the South Cascadia Subduction Zone indicate a correlation is there in time, which may be evidence that quakes on the Cascadia Subduction Zone may have triggered most of the major earthquakes on the North San Andreas during at least the past 3,000 years or so. The evidence also shows a rupture direction going from north to south in each of these time-correlated events. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake seems to have been a major exception to this correlation, however, as it was not preceded by a major Cascadia quake. So uh, we do have here, oh, here they talk about the, uh, uh, the uh, earthquake of uh, 1700, and uh, there's more details here. These are the Cascadia volcanoes. Okay, Blanco fracture zone is where we have this swarm here. Cascadia volcanic arc, as you can see here. Mount Baker, Glacier Park, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Mount Hood, Mount Jefferson, Three Sisters, Newbury, Crater Lake, Mount Shasta, Medicine Lake, Lassen Peak. So, these are the volcanic arc, the uh, Cascadia volcanic arc. The uh, area, uh, the arc consists of a series of quaternary age stratovolcanoes that grew on top of pre-existing geological materials. The most active volcanoes in the chain include Mount St. Helens, Mount Baker, Lassen Peak, Mount Shasta, Mount Hood. Mount St. Helens captured worldwide attention when it erupted in 1980. And it continues to rumble, of course. Most of the volcanoes have a main central vent from which the most cent recent eruptions have occurred. And, uh, okay, that's our volcanic arc there in the Cascadia area. So all of you there, please be very careful because um, they're ongoing. 198 quakes. And as we said here, as the geologists have told us, the Cascadia quakes can affect the North San Andreas quake, uh, fault giving uh, large quakes there as well. So please be alert and careful. 
Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.